Hey, good evening, y'all. Happy Friday. It's your friend Donnie. I invite you to join me out here on the deck for a pipe and a pour. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's Friday night. It's been a week. I deserve a pour. Y'all deserve a pour and a nice pipe. So would you please join me? Pack a pipe. Get a pour. Let's chat for a few minutes. Got a couple things I want to talk to you about, right? So, in the pipe. The pipe tonight. Let's see if we can get there. You can see that grain. There we are. Aye, aye, aye. This is my birthday becker that my amazing wife got for me at the Mule Town Show. That is just beautiful grain on there, man. Fantastic work, and I love smoking it. There we go. And it tonight is quickly becoming one of my favorites. Uh, again, it was gifted to me on my birthday by my, my good buddy, which I'll call Doc McScootigans. Um, the old Mac Baron HH, old Dark Fired. Fantastic stuff. If you have not tried it, I recommend you give it a shot. Um, Dark fired Burleys with some flu cured Virginias tucked in there, pressed in these beautiful flakes. Really easy to rub out, really easy to fold and stuff. Um, and just yummy. The thing that's surprising about this is you open the tin, and um, or in this case the jar, and I swear it smells like an English with Latakia in there. I mean, it smells like there's Latakia in there. That rich, toasty, roasty, woodsy smell that you get with Latakia. Obviously, it's from the, the Dark Fired Burleys. Uh, but there's no Latakia at all in it, apparently. So that's just awesome. Um, but it's super yummy. Uh, it, it is it's one of those that I just, yeah, really good. What's interesting, though, if you remember a video or two ago, I was talking about, actually, I guess this is the last one I did, I was talking about, I'm struggling with Burleys after the um, after the Codger Challenge, where I just smoked Burleys for like two months, and I, my mouth was all aggravated and, and tongue would burn and bite and whatever. I, just, I was not enjoying it at all. But this being Burley based, no problem with it at all today. So that's good. I'm excited about that. I was nervous. I let it go out again. Um, <clears throat> we'll get to that in a minute. The pour. So, a little inspired tonight by our old friends over at Pipes, Pours, and Pals. Justin and Nate, cheers to you, gentlemen. Been enjoying uh, your podcast, and I recommend, if you guys have not picked up on their podcast, go check it out. Pipes, Pours, and Pals, they're just like us. They're dudes that needed a place to get together. They wanted to connect with somebody over a pipe, uh, and they enjoy a poor as well as anybody else. So, good on you guys. Really enjoying the podcast. Please keep it up. And I don't know why we aren't best friends already. Pipes and a pipe and a pour. Pipes, pours, and pals. Yeah, it's meant to be. Mm hmm. Hmm. I say they inspired me. Why? But one of their recent episodes here, last week or two. They were enjoying some rye whiskey and uh, Coffee Pot Codger um, mentioned that, Justin, right? Oh my gosh, dude. What kind of pal am I? I can't. Anyway, um, mentioned that he thought he might be becoming a rye guy. And I was like, well, I've heard from a number of folks about rye. My last video, or two videos ago, I introduced you guys to the Barrel Seagrass Rye, which is an amazing, beautiful blended rye, Canadian and, and American rye whiskeys, finished in three different kind of apricot brandy and Madeira cask and something else. And it's just amazing and delicious. So it got me thinking, like, what else can I tell, you know, uh, tell you guys who may be interested in getting into rye whiskeys? I'll tell you what my 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 whiskey mentor told me, the guy that I, I got to know and meet who it does it for a living. I mean, it's what he does for a living is, is in the, the spirits industry. And it's amazing palate, amazing barrel picker kind of guy. Uh, years ago, he's like, Donnie, do you, do you like rye? I was like, eh, yeah, maybe. Uh, I've tried some, no big deal. And he's like, well, hey, try this one. 
but understand it's a slippery slope. And he was so right, y'all. Oh my gosh. Rye whiskeys are amazing. It is truly the first American spirit. Um, even more, even though bourbon's the official one, rye whiskey was around long before bourbon was in the United States, as far as I know, with the minimal research I've done. Um, but they're so vastly different, and there's so many different ways to go about it, and they all bring different characters. So I had a couple recommendations for you guys I'll run through quickly. If you want to start with uh, High Proof Wilderness Trail. Wilderness Trail is a fantastic distillery up in Danville, Kentucky. Um, they do amazing work. They're actually headed up by a dude that's a real life like scientist, a PhD doctor guy. Um, now, this one is a high proof because it's a single barrel pick. I don't know if you can see, there we go. That's 122 proof. Let you know it's there and it'll bite you a little bit, but it's so delicious. And they're cool because they have their own unique yeast strains. Um, and they will tell you about the char and the toasted and the barrel and where it was and all that fun stuff. Uh, so this is a four year, four month, single barrel, 122 proof rye. It's amazing, usually 60, 65 bucks. So not, not too bad on the bank, but yeah. Not, uh, not as affordable as what um, Pipes, Pours, and Pals guys were drinking. Next up is probably one of my very favorite distilleries. Uh, they're all my favorite, aren't they? High West. High West Distillery. Um, not only is the bottle awesome, you see that, whatever that is. Um, this is their double rye, again, a single barrel pick from a local shop that was finished in Syrah cask, which is just, this is like a fantastic, rich dessert kind of rye whiskey at 104 proof. Um, a little bit more expensive because of a single barrel pick, but still well worth it. More affordable still. You've heard me talk about them before. Ah, uh, yeah, my old friend Pinhook with a particular horse, Jockey Silk. Uh, this is Hard Rye Guy, the 2021 edition, um, coming in at 98 proof. These are 35, 40 bucks a piece. Great for sipping, but also great for blending. Highly recommend it. But, as I said, inspired by the, the boys over there, Justin and Nate, the classic, the Sazerac Rye. Because it's Buffalo Trace product, yes, it's hard to find sometimes. But it comes in at 90 proof, so it's really approachable, really fruity and sweet. And there's a little bit of, like they said, a little honey to it. And I'm discovering it pairs really, really well with um, the old Dark Fired. Yes, I'm talking fast because I want to cover a lot of ground. I'm always long-winded. So, there, that's for you guys. Anyone interested in it, some more um, rye or bourbon reviews or suggestions, Always happy to talk about it. That's my first first advice. Um, second thing, <clears throat> before I forget, I've got a special guest with me tonight. Hello. That's Maddie over there, my daughter. Hi. She's over there hanging out playing a game with me while she's uh, on the deck. Well, yeah. She's here, hanging out. Um, we are on the deck. Mm -hmm. She and I are on the deck together, enjoying this humid Friday afternoon. Um, but I wanted to also, uh, my, my <laughs> yes, um, I wanted to do that. I was inspired also by our buddy, Sean Ghost Cobb. He was very open and vulnerable this week and shared with us about, you know, his family, his mom and dad's passing and as well as Macy, his pup and our pups are, are part of the family too. And they have an impact. And it's just, it reminded me and it got me thinking about our, our Lily Bell, um, she was two years old when we had to send her over the, I know, baby. She was two years old when we had to send her over the Rainbow Bridge. Um, she was a rescue puppy, kind of a black lab mix, beautiful little dog. When I say little, she got big, like 85 pounds. Um, just, but a, a fantastic dog, but there was, I've trained quite a few dogs and I had a hard time with her. Just didn't, uh, something didn't click. We had, a, we had a difficult time with her. It was not a good puppy experience. Um, Come on now, here we go. There we go. Nice, rich smoke from that old dark fired. Um, she started having seizures about a year and a half in, and uh, our neighbor back here is is, is a vet, and um, our vet, and so uh, we took her over to see her at her clinic and 
started looking at stuff like meningitis and all that and ran some tests, did some pretty aggressive treatment on her, see if we could kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, but the seizures continued and the behavior changed in her, which was really sad to see. And then uh, we started seeing some wasting away, like half of her, her face and her shoulder and her, her haunches, she started to fade away. And the, the muscle wasting was obvious. She got to where she couldn't really get up and move much. Um, and again, her, her personality and attitude changed. We figured it's just, well, we gotta we take another look. Yeah, she had a brain tumor. So at just over two years old, we had to make the tough decision to, to end her suffering and put her, send her over the rainbow bridge. And um, gosh, what was that Maddie three years ago now? Four years ago? Wow, it's been four years. See, they stick with us, don't they? They stick with us. Um, and they always have a special place, always will. So again, Sean and Ghost Cobb, thanks buddy for sharing with us and being open and vulnerable about, about your family. That includes Macy. Um, definitely understand uh, the tough time getting used to not having that faithful companion around. So um, yeah. Anyway, one last note. Um, I've failed to mention it the last couple of times we've talked because I, the, the idea is they just bounce around. Um, that whole 100 plus subscriber thing that I talked about, still unreal, still unreal. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me for a little bit. Um, but again, the unwritten rules of the YTPC, as I understand them are, um, when you hit a milestone, like, I don't know, 100 subscribers, then it's time for a, uh, a giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do a giveaway. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know when I'm gonna do it yet. You know, the whole house move, we close in two weeks. Um, so maybe it'll be a, hey, welcome to the new house, Donnie, and let's give something away for getting 100 subscribers. Um, We'll figure that out. I've got some ideas. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I just gotta see if I can work it out. I've got, so I got a few feelers out there. Uh, see if I can figure out how I wanna do this, but should be fun. So please stay tuned. Yes, that is a, a not so subtle uh, request for you guys to like, subscribe, share with your friends, come back and visit us again. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for hanging out with me this afternoon. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed a couple of uh, recommendations on some great rides. Sean, thank you again for being open. Thank you guys for stopping by for a few minutes to uh, share a pipe. There it is. And a pour with me. Cheers, y'all. Have a great weekend. We'll talk soon.